Welcome back. Iran has admitted that its military shot down a Ukraine plane by mistake. The aircraft carrying 176 passengers and crew was downed earlier this week. It was struck by Iran hours after the country fired retaliatory missiles on two air bases housing U.S. forces in Iraq. Tensions between Tehran and Washington escalated last week when President Donald Trump gave the go-ahead for the killing of a top Iranian general. Joining me now to discuss these latest developments is Naeem Jenner. He is the executive director at the Afro Middle East Center. He's live for us on Skype tonight. Naeem, a very good evening to you and thank you for being on Newsnight. So how plausible is this explanation from Iran that it shot down uh, that Ukrainian jet by mistake, given that in the days prior it had insisted that that was not what had happened? Well, uh, in the days prior, it was they were either trying to cover up or they were still investigating. Um, and, and unsure of what had happened. So it seems that what actually happened was that the um, uh, anti-aircraft uh, defense system um, was triggered. Someone pressed the button and, uh, and fired this, uh, this missile against this plane, uh, thinking that it was an enemy plane. Um, I mean, firstly, of course, uh, one would have expected that while they were, uh, you know, in, in those hours, uh, after they had fired missiles into Iraq, that they would um, declare a kind of no-fly zone uh, over over their territory, so that this wouldn't happen, but they didn't. Um, so I, I think it, it's uh, they, they, there is really no reason why Iran would deliberately shoot down this plane. Uh, the majority of the passengers on the plane were Iranians. Uh, there were a number of Canadians, many of whom uh, have dual citizenship, uh, so are also Iranians. Um, so there's no reason for them deliberately to shoot the plane. All right, Naeem, we're having a, a slight issue with our connection to you, at the moment that, um, this I want to persevere just further here, Naeem, and ask you then, because you've got this is a Ukrainian jet. The President Vladimir Zelensky is demanding an apology and compensation for the families of those who died. You've also got the Canadians who also want some level of justice for their citizens who died. There's about 60 people from Canada on the aircraft when it went down. How is this likely to affect Iran's position in the global community, especially among the countries that have been sympathetic to Tehran when these tensions with America escalated just over a week ago? Well, clearly people are, people are angry and people are upset. Uh, it doesn't seem, however, that, that anyone is uh, really believing that it was deliberate. Um, however, I think that the, uh, the, the claims for compensation need to be taken seriously. Certainly the, the claims from Ukraine are related more to the, uh, to the crew and, and, and to the plane, uh, because there are not many passengers that were Ukrainian. Um, and then Iran's going to have to negotiate with, the, um, with Canada and with the, with the other countries or other families, whatever the case might be. Um, and I think that, that there would be an expecta a just expectation of some kind of compensation for what Iran's saying was an error, an accident. Mm. And there was some level of de-escalation in the tension between uh, Iran and the United States earlier this week after the retaliatory strikes that I alluded to earlier. Given where we are now with the additional sanctions announced by the Americans yesterday on Iranian interests and individuals, should we at this point write off any hope of pleasant or perhaps decent relations between the two countries until there's been a change in either government, in particular in Washington? In reality, there haven't been pleasant or decent, decent relations between them for the past 40 years. Um, even even when the nuclear deal, uh, the Iran nuclear deal, had been negotiated and then signed, um, one would be hard pressed to say that the relations were were pleasant. Um, they were relations that existed because of a particular negotiations. I don't think at this stage that uh, relations can be any worse than they were um, two weeks ago. Um, I think, however, that um, from the Iranian side, they're hoping that uh, Trump loses the election and then they would be able to uh, perhaps uh, look at uh, working with the new president, uh, getting the U.S. back into the nuclear deal, etc. For, for Iran, the nuclear deal is a critical thing. 
Um, firstly, of course, it it, uh, it means that they impose restrictions on themselves in terms of the de nuclear development. But for Iran, it means that uh, uh, that it's a process towards lifting of sanctions. Um, so if it means that uh, they, there's a new president and they have to uh, pretend at least to be uh, pleasant relations, I think that will happen. But for now, um, things are as they are, and I don't think that they're improving. And always important, as you say, to remember that the tension between the two nations did not begin with Donald Trump although it may have escalated in the past week. Naim Jenna from the Afro Middle East Center, thank you so much for your time.